we're talking about Axon today, um, and they kind of started with this technology. They kind of started with tasers. I think they were even called like the taser company back in the 1990s when they got started, and eventually they changed to Axon. Um, but uh, but believe it or not, as of today, they are defining themselves a little bit differently. And I wanted to actually just play you literally 30 seconds from their earnings call. And this shows you that no longer are they just a taser company. Let's take a listen. First and possibly the most significant is artificial intelligence. We are positioning ourselves as the indisputable leader in delivering the power of AI in practical, usable applications to our customers. We've been at this for many years and our progress is accelerating as the underlying technology and the interest to adopt reaches critical mass here in the US and around the world. One year ago, I shared with you our vision for generative AI applications as we saw commercially available LLMs, large language models, coming to the market. I told you we would be ready to catch the ball. Well, in April, we launched Drop One, a powerful new AI. So I'm gonna stop it there and I'm gonna just kind of tell you a couple of things that they're doing in, in AI before we start to talk deeper about the stock and, and get your take on things. But basically they have a, an AI large language model built into their, not built into the body cam, but built into their overall software suite. So when a police officer finishes a call, Axon can take all the audio from the suspect and from the officer, compile it into a police report, and it essentially saves a police officer 20 to 25% of their overall work hours during the day because it's doing the police reports for the police officer. And the police officer still checks over the police report before submitting it. But essentially, it's writing police reports for a police officer and saving 20 to 25% of officer hours. That's a huge improvement in efficiency and productivity for police officers. So yeah, Axon is a company that serves police departments uh, sometimes that can be local police or federal police. I, they do have a little bit of exposure to military, foreign governments, but essentially they are working with law enforcement. And they've got a new segment that uses AI to look at license plates. So they do dashboard cams in addition to body cams on police officers. And we already mentioned their taser segment. But these dash cams now are reading license plates with AI everywhere the officer goes. And it can help, you know, do early detection for criminals in cars with license plates that have a warrant out for them, things like that. Um, I could go on, but just to get your take initially, Kai, how does this sound to you so far? Sound interesting? So Axon has been one of my favorite companies. It's a brick and mortar company. I can understand what it does. It has excellent financials. Accent has been on my watch list for the last two years. I currently don't hold a position, but I have held a position multiple times in Axon. Um, let me just ask you a few different things, okay? Um, and then in general, a lot of our listeners may be sort of asking, hey, Axon, initially we're talking about this. How is this an AI? Um, why is this on an AI podcast? Um, and so I think you started explaining that really, really well. You do not sound like you're in law enforcement at all. I can obviously just tell that right off the bat, James. You, you're not a police officer um, based on what you just said. But um, I think all of these sort of applications are great. Is the company just saying AI, like we've talked about other companies such as um, Intuitive Surgical, for example, just saying AI for the hype? No, because not only... So they've shifted a lot, okay? So I, I I can see how you would say, oh, this is a company that makes tasers and body cams. Why would they be talking about AI? They're saying AI for the hype. I can see how you would come to that conclusion. But if you look a little more deeply into the company and what they've been doing and who they've been acquiring over the past years, they are transforming into a software and data company. Okay, so earlier this year, they acquired Fusis, which is the global leader in real-time crime center technology. And it's essentially a company that uses video feeds and puts that together into AI and data. And so that's a huge acquisition for them. They're also getting into drones and unmanned ground vehicle technology too, which is going to be a big AI thing. So they're leading the charge in drones as a first responder. So pretty much when there's a 911 call, a drone goes out in place of or in addition to a police car. And here's the trippy thing they said on their earnings call. 
They said in 10 years, they expect a one-to-one ratio of drones to police cars, okay? So, <laughs> right? So they, they're saying the total addressable market for police drones, they expect to absolutely skyrocket over the next 10 years. And here's the catch. Right now, China is a leader in drones used in the US with their company DJI. But it's looking like the US may eventually curtail or ban Chinese drones or Chinese software on drones. And that's where Axon can come in and be a leader. So I would say that there's a lot working for them. Um, They've been acquiring companies that are a little more adjacent to AI, autonomous technology, big data. They're becoming a data and software company over the past years. And and, And they still have the tasers. I mean, last year, they sold more body cams than they ever have. I'm sorry, last quarter, they sold more body cams than they ever have in any quarter. So certain segments are still growing, um, but uh, but I would say, no, don't think of them as just a company that's pretending to be AI. Right. So uh, competitors, you mentioned Chinese, co- the Chinese company, any other competitors? I mean, when I think of Axon, I, th- I obviously think of tasers. And then I also think of body cams and drones, et cetera. However, I also think of police. Those are just the first few things. However, I, lo- I, I actually love this company as far as excellent financials, uh, great fundamentals, and I really like how it is. Its research and development department has really led to actually the end game in their products that they're selling. So, what other competitors do they have? Yeah, it's funny you talk about their research and development department. So, apparently, there's some controversy where they wanted to do a drone taser that shoots a taser out of a drone, and then a bunch of their board members stepped down because they didn't want to do this. So research and development, definitely, they've got that. Um, competitors, I do think on the drone, I mean, on the in, in the drone sphere, look, DJI is just globally renowned. DJI, I've got one. Your brother, who's a friend of mine, has a DJI drone. Everyone has a DJI drone. Actually, I just bought another one because they came out with a new one that's only $200 and it's a selfie drone. It flies behind you and follows you with AI. Super sick. Uh, it's not even released until a few days from now. So DJI is the world leader in drones, and most U.S. companies are going to use it. But already to this day, there are certain places where you can't use a DJI drone. Like in Florida, a uh, government is not allowed to use DJI, and other departments just made up the decision outside of Florida. Other departments just made the decision, we're not going to use Chinese drones. So essentially, with this war, this technology war between the U.S. and China, I do think there's potential for companies like Axon to do more and more business. Um, so, but yeah, as far as competition, I'm not, you know, let's talk about the other segments, tasers. I'm not going to buy, if, if I really need a taser to defend my life, I'm not going to buy a cheap one off of Amazon from China. If I really depend on a taser, like police officers depend on tasers for their life, they're going to buy an Axon taser. Now there are different types of tasers. You know, some are contact, some shoot out the little probes, which is what Axon pioneered. But um, in general, I don't see them having a lot of competition on tasers. On body cams, yeah, there are cheap body cams off of Amazon, but it's a whole suite of software that they're offering now. So they've got 122% net revenue retention, which means they're not just retaining 100% of their customers, they're upselling those customers 22% per year. Um, So they're actually able to push more and more software to existing customers, more and more sales to existing customers. Right. Um, so let me get to my one biggest negative with Axon, and that is the PE. So the current price of this equity, underlying equity, is too high for me, James. Give me a counter to that. Well, there's not a great counter to that. You're right. You're 100% right. Um, if you look at the forward PE, and by the way, we had some viewers who tried to roast us on one video because we were sharing PE ratios that were different than what they saw in Yahoo Finance. So we usually use forward PE ratios for rapidly growing companies, which is what you're supposed to do. So please, if you're a listener and the PE I'm about to say doesn't match up with what you think it is, please do some research on forward PEs. So we're considering their their earnings for the next four quarters, not for the past four quarters. But 59 to 63 is their forward PE. So 63 would be a fair valuation average analyst estimates. Yeah. So what justifies a taser drone um, body cam company um, that has stable as well as increasing demand? What justifies a forward PE of 50? Yep. 
That's a very easy answer. 35% year over year revenue growth. Okay, so you will see over time that that PE ratios generally go in line with how fast the company is growing. This company is growing pretty dang fast. Um, now, I, I don't know there this. So margins are an issue I'd like to ask you about, Kai, because apparently there's tons of ways to slice this pie for margin. So they like to, on, on earnings calls, companies like to give their adjusted gross margin, which is always going to be way higher than like their profit margin. So their AGM, their adjusted gross margin is 62.5%. If you go and look at Yahoo Finance, you're going to see they have a 16% profit margin and a 7% operating margin. So that's what, one of the reasons why I don't talk about margins as much because there's like a ton of different ways to come up with their margin <laughs> number. So which one do you use? I mean, I guess what matters is you compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges. So you need to kind of know what is your margin number that you like to use and stick with that compared across companies and sectors. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I guess they're... Mar yeah, I mean... So net profit margin is kind of a basic one that I like to use. Um, I think it's great for just your basic investor out there who's basically saying, hey, I want to look up uh, McDonald's and the net profit margin and see how that looks. And basically, the higher the net profit margin, a net profit margin over 20% is excellent, right? Um, a company like Axon, I think, is less than 10%. I think its current net profit margin is around 8%. However, it is a very highly valued stock. Um, it has shown excellent growth and the market does re reward growth. Um, so let me say that. Let me give you a few positives. The biggest negative I have is basically they're just a current, the, what it's currently valued at uh, in regards to the market and its competitors. And, uh, but I, the things I love about it is basically a stable demand, an increasing demand, which is being shown in their revenue growth. I also sort of like the political climate, the geopolitical concerns that are out there in regards to Axon as a company. For example, we are seeing other companies benefit from AI, other chip companies benefit from AI in regards to the geopolitical climate with China. I like Axon in, in that sphere. I like Axon in, as far as police departments getting lean, uh, finding different ways to uh, for police departments to invest to uh, protect and to serve the public, and Axon is providing some solutions and answers there. I also really love the innovation. Love the innovation. Um, but um, for those out there, please check out AXON. We forgot to say the stock ticker. Um, it's a company with great fundamentals, which you know that I typically like those. This isn't a company that is not profitable, for which we have talked about, that um, is basically, basically, we're just looking at future. This is not Tempest AI. This is actually a tried and true company that is showing excellent growth, excellent, excellent growth. However, I am not a current buyer of Axon at the current evaluation because I think their forward P is too high. All right. Well, um, so... I am buying Axon for their 35% year over year profit growth. And because they're trying to be an AI company and focus on software and data in addition to just tasers and body cams. Yeah. Your timetable for that is probably two, five years. For our listeners out there, I'm looking at just the next three months. So over the next three months, I'm not currently buying Axon. I am buying Axon and any pullback. The Axon is not going to be dragged down by their own fundamentals. Axon will be dragged down by overall market sentiment, period. And so when the market gets crazy and everybody gets fearful, I'm going to get greedy, just like Warren Buffett said, and I will be buying Axon then. However, at the current evaluation, I am not buying Axon with its Ford P.